Welcome, Naomi. Uh, congratulations you. on your opening win. Uh, can you describe your thoughts after the match? <laughs> Sorry, we walked fast over yeah, here. <laughs> I'm like breathing. <laughs> um, okay, uh, thoughts after the match. Um, you know, I, I thought the first set was really tough, um, so I'm, I'm really glad I was able to close it in too. And um, overall, I think, you know, um, mentally, I tried to stay as strong as I can, so I'm really happy about that. Hello, Naomi. Hello. Um, congrats on the win. Um, those couple of games, like, towards the end of the set, seemed like the forehand kind of let you down a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, like, going into the breaker, what were you telling yourself to kind of pull out of that, you know, not let that spiral? Yeah, um, you know, I, I was just telling myself, like, my forehand's one of my biggest weapons, and I shouldn't be too discouraged because I knew that the shots that I, weren't, that I was going for that I missed were, like, good intentioned. Um, so, I don't know. I was just telling myself that was probably a result of nerves, and I just have to keep going for my shots and eventually... Well, hopefully they start going in. Hi, Naomi. Um, I don't know if you've seen the film Challengers? Yes. Yeah, um, what do you think of it, and what do you think specifically are the most plausible and implausible bits of it? Um, I take all tennis movies in stride. <laughs> so, like, this one, I, I was kind of pleasantly surprised that they knew what Challengers were, and... Um, it kind of showed a little bit of the tennis lifestyle in the very beginning of the movie. So um, I thought it was interesting. And, and I also feel like it's very cool because people are talking about the movie a lot, obviously. So it's bringing uh, attention to tennis. Did you think the characters were quite plausible emotion, on an emotional level? Sorry? Did you think the characters were plausible on an emotional level? So the reactions to their setbacks that they had? Um... um Yes, yes and no, because, no, I, I just feel like it's, it's a movie, <laughs> so I, I try not to think it's too realistic, but for me, I wasn't really watching it for the tennis, more the storyline I thought was pretty interesting. Yeah, as such a top player, someone who's won so many slams. I just wanted to ask you about uh, Iga Svantec and what you make of her right now and how tough a player she is to play. I haven't played her that yet. Not for a while, I know, but, you know, <laughs> um, when you did. Yeah, I mean, I always say this, but I think, you know, she's incredible. Like, the way that she's able to maintain being number one and constantly do well at all the tournaments is something that um, I honestly can't can't think of or can't fathom back when I was number one for like five seconds but uh, <laughs> um, yeah I mean I think she's great for the sport and I also think watching Sabalenka um, doing so well is, is super super fun and I hope that I'm able to play them both one day Hi Naomi I have a music question for you I haven't seen you in a minute good to see you yeah. <laughs> I have a music question for you. I'm curious if you've been following any of the feud between Drake and Kendrick Lamar and if you have a side that you picked and what you make of the music that's come out of it. You know, I'm a pacifist. I'm a neutral party. But, however, Kendrick dropped some heat that last song. That last song is amazing and I played it walking onto the court. So, um, currently, I, I think Kendrick's doing a good job. Can I ask a quick follow-up on that? It won't get you in trouble, I promise. But um, if you were in this, do you think that Kendrick should drop another song? Or yeah. is it done? You do? Yeah, Even, sorry. Okay. <laughs> you, you're a pile, you want, you want to pile on? Like, why do you, you know, why? But, okay, but technically, though, Kendrick dropped um, that song, and then Drake dropped the heart part six. So, technically, Kendrick could drop another two if he wanted to. And me being a Kendrick fan, I haven't gotten this many Kendrick songs in a very long time. So, you know, if he wants to keep dropping. I can take it back to tennis, but sorry. <laughs> sorry, Room. Um, but in terms of getting this win, 
playing the way that you did. Does this feel like a step forward for you? Like what does this victory kind of do for you in your clay court journey this year? Yeah, um, you know, I think for me, it wasn't really tennis wise, more mentally what that's not a word, mental wise. I think um, obviously I was up 5-3, I was serving for the set and um, I lost that. And I think just being able to hang in there and um, eventually close it on my terms is something that I'm very proud of myself for. And um, I, I obviously played a lot better in the second set. So I'm hoping that when I play my match tomorrow, I'm able to learn from the mistakes that I did today and um, apply them better. hot in here, no? I just wanted to ask you as well, today um, Andy Murray has kind of announced that he's going to launch his next comeback and I think it might be his last I'm year. I'm sorry, so. I'm so deaf. Can you hear me now? I hope so. <laughs> uh, I was asking about Andy Murray because he's announced okay. today he's going to make his next comeback and we think it'll be his last year on the tour. I just wonder if you could kind of summarize his impact on tennis over, the, over you know, his career. Yeah, um, it's funny. I actually asked Wim where Murray was because I haven't seen him for a couple of tournaments, so I didn't know that he was out. Um, but, I mean, for me, Murray's such a great guy, such a tough competitor, and I think it's it's really amazing, you know, the fact that he loves tennis so much and he keeps coming back and he's had all these injuries and um, he's kind of unrelentless in a way. Or relentless, Relent. yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um and just his ability to keep playing matches at a high level. And um, for me, when I think about him and when I think about the legacy that he leaves on tennis, uh, obviously he's done a lot for, um, can I say UK tennis or should I say British tennis? British. Ten yeah, British fine. tennis. Um, and I think as a kid watching him on TV, playing these amazing battles, it, it's just he's affected every every tennis kid worldwide, so. Do you think he's an ally as well for women's tennis mm -hmm. as well? He's been outspoken about that. Yeah, he's been very vocal and, um, you know, I, I know all tennis players and all female athletes really appreciate it. Thank you. Naomi, I'm curious whether in the conversations that you have with Wim or even former coaches, like just, um, you know, playing on clay, how much of is there much back and forth between you guys in terms of the push-pull of improving the skills that would m make you feel more comfortable on the surface, like movement or tactics or things like that, versus just be Naomi, just, just bang the ball uh, and just play your hardcore game on clay and see how it goes? Like, I could see there being two schools of thought on mm -hmm. that, and has that been kind of the push and pull within you, and how do you kind of come down on it, I guess? Yeah, um, it's been kind of tough for me because when I played my last match in Madrid, I was obviously a lot more defensive than I would have wanted. And um, to be honest, I'm not sure if that was because of clay court. Um, I think I just wanted to play a little bit more rallies with her. And um, today I told Wim that I, I wanted to come out a lot stronger. Um, but obviously that didn't happen. Um, so yeah, there is a little bit of back and forth with me, but sometimes I think that <laughs> I think that Ostapenko won French Open, so you know maybe I should just stick to my guns. But to be honest, I don't really try to like bang the ball. Like that's just what happens. Um, and I I think for me, I just want to put more spin on it while rotating it a lot more. And I think when I'm finally able to achieve that. Um, It'll obviously be quite heavy, so I hope that'll be my clay court tennis. Hi, Naomi. I'm, I'm writing a piece about rankings, um, and I'm curious, uh, maybe when you were less experienced, was there ever a time when the ranking was too much in your head and you're thinking too much of points or, you know, and that kind of thing instead of, you know, developing as a player and winning matches? Mm. Honestly, I've never been a ranking player. I've, <laughs> and then someone's gonna pull out a quote that I was a ranking player. Um, in my head, I was never a ranking player unless it was to get in the main draw or to be seated for um, a slam. That for me is um, obviously 
very um, important for me and then maybe to be in the top 10. <laughs> um, but the only real time I've ever thought about rankings was when I played Kvitova uh, for the number one spot in Australia. And <laughs> that, that was very stressful for me. So I, I try not to think too much about it. Yeah. Cool, thanks.